Mike is always restlessly seeking better ways of doing things. The reason Mike is an Arab fellow is because he's so good at that ability to bring innovation into design. Mike is brave and bullish and confident. I think that comes across in his client relationships. A super sustainable agenda underpins a lot of his work. He's also a really nice bloke. He's the sort of person you just want to go to the pub with and have a beer and a chat. So when I was younger, your grandfather, his architectural practice, had a, a philosophy of long life, loose fit, low energy. I sort of stuck with you in the projects and stuff that you've done through your career? Yeah, it really has. My parents really had a very strong work ethic and doing the right things for the right reason. And that really has followed me into my career. Over my career, I've always been a bit of a nerd, a bit of a boffin. So I've loved the building physics, the fundamentals of why we do what we do. And that also plays into the digital realm. My job role today at Arup is twofold. One is designer in the built environment, winning and designing buildings in an adventurous and pioneering way. And the other side of it is I'm a global automation leader for Arup, helping a firm adopt tools and systems that will help us do things better, do things faster, and do more for our clients and for the wider society. Mike is an innovator in the truest sense of the word. He looks for the opportunity to do the world first, to do the new thing in the new way that goes beyond what the client's asking for and deliver something groundbreaking that others can then follow. We've worked with clients over the years. We've achieved lots of pioneering mm. things. Pioneering comes when they have the confidence and the trust in the team that they surround themselves with. So our first project for Sky was Sky Studios, which was a radical departure from previous studio design. Not only did it have the world's first naturally ventilated television studio near Heathrow Airport, it had to be totally quiet for broadcast and naturally ventilated at the same time. So in all ways, an environmental move forward in design for studios for the world. When clients ask Mike for his advice or his input into a project, I think they know that they're going to get somebody who's going to push the boundary. He's not going to settle for the thing we did last time. It's really interesting the way that you've made the engineering sort of disappear and open it up so that it's really people scale. And Broadgate Circle is at the centre of the Broadgate development on the City of London. What we were asked to do was help revitalise this piece for people, make it a popular place again if people want to come. Place to buzz, making major interventions structurally and from a services point of view. Now it's commercially successful, people want to go there, it's a buzzing place. So a real sort of moniker of how design and thinking about people and their social interactions can take a place forward. Mike tends to start things by stopping and thinking first. Big exciting project kicking off, everybody's keen to just get stuck in and start it. But what Mike did was stop. He put the people in the room for a couple of days. We sat and thought about how could we do things better? What problems might we encounter? And then we start the project. And I think not enough leaders take that approach. They're not sort of brave enough to say, let's stop and think. One Finsbury Avenue was a building that our associates worked on and being invited to work back on that building to refurbish it. We changed the design completely. And that conversion had an agenda to reuse as much as possible. And we actually managed to retain 90% of the central plant in that building. Thousands of tons of carbon dioxide safe. So really a step forward in terms of thinking about reuse before you decide to chuck it away and start again. We designed a building way ahead of its time that was a tiny pavilion, something to demonstrate solar technology for the G8 conference. And it was an exemplar of rapid design construction. This tiny pavilion was then relocated down to South Wales, a reusable building. And it's there to this day as a meeting center for an energy park in South Wales. One thing that I've learned from Mike is that emphasis around not doing what we did last time, driving design forwards. Mike is part of a continuum of free thinking and thinking from first principles mechanical engineers in Arab. He's learnt from the people who go in front of him and then improved on what they've done. And behind him come another generation of people who are challenging him, but also being inspired and led by him. I want to continue pushing the boundaries, doing things people didn't think was possible, to really focus on a sustainable future and a future that's great for people.